All right, so I'm going to follow a similar theme. Um, and the idea is let's just get a good starting point and, and take the pressure off ourselves to get perfect scores. So I'm looking at the high bar section of uh, Brandon's cheat sheet. And I'm going to show you a JV high bar routine. And so as a judge, you should already, I mean, you don't, you never know what you're going to see, but you can guess what to expect, which is, Hey, look at all these requirements on high bar. Let's skip to the non-diagrammed A's <laughs> swing, half turn, hip circles. We don't even really see cast hops back, baby giant, front baby giant, kip, drop, kip. Sure. Back up, rise, pull over. And then, yeah, I mean, great. If they, if they have giants to hop out of, God bless them. Good, good for them. Um, don't even worry about bonuses. The bonus is 0.1. If you miss a bonus, it, it's not going to matter. So for JV high bar, and honestly, for a lot of varsity high bar, you're not really going to see that many skills. So I'm going to set this challenge out. Let me zoom in here. Uh, there we go. All right. <laughs> um, so your challenge is Again, just focus on the skills, but because there's so few skills that we're going to see or that we would expect for JV high bar, also note stops because we're going to see a ton of stops on any high bar um, and free swings. So just those things. Recognize the most likely all non-diagrammed A skills, count the stops or make some not notation for a stop. Um, I just take two tenths on every stop, just flat out. Um, and then a little more if it's, there's ugliness happening, but for, for me, you'll see me notate just two tenths. Um, and then free swings if you can. And even when I'm counting free swings, I, I kind of get lost in them because sometimes there's so many, I, I can't, is that, is that the second one forward? Is that the third one forward backswing? I don't know. Um, and so I judge vertically. I think most of you have seen my sheets. Uh, let's see. So high bar, um, I've got my requirements, which we're not really going to hit any. And uh, I'm just going to go down and show you my notation as we go. So I'm just going to let this run live. I'm only going to write the skills that I see and any stops. And I'm going to try to catch all the free swings. So here we go. Okay, so let me zoom in a little bit here. There we go. A little bigger. All right, so I've got half turn, uh, free swings. Uh, I think, I don't know, another free swing. Um, kip, stop, back hip circle. This is my US for undershoot. Undershoot is not a skill, but it's also not a deduction. So I just note undershoot. Uh, free swing back, fly away. And then I said, don't worry about deductions, but since it was the last thing, I threw down three, two, one. So that was something like chest, uh, step, you know, lack of control, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so that, that's all I've got here. So now that the routine is over, uh, my next step is to look at difficulty. So, or yes, uh, uh, skill, skill value. Half turn is a non-diagrammed A. Kip is a non-diagrammed A. Back hip circle is a non-diagrammed A. I do a slash to show no value, or if they were to repeat a trick, I do a slash to, to remind myself that I've accounted for it, but it has no value. And the flyaway is an A. Then I look at my requirements list. Um, were there any swinging skills for credit? No, there were no fig swinging skills. Flight element, no release move, no in bar move. There was a dismount. So I note the element groups on the left hand side and I use their Roman numerals just to make them look distinct. So that's his element group four, but it's only an A dismount. So I make this notation of it's a three tenths credit for this element group four. 
I've developed this system because I make my deductions in line here. And so this way, like if there were more element groups, they would be standing off to the side after the fact, you know, like this. And so I can clearly see, okay, here's what I recorded live. Here are the uh, skill values that I wrote in after the routine was over. And again, after the routine was over, I went back and added, uh, notated whatever element groups he had. So in this case, he definitely didn't get these element groups. And then to make my life simple, uh, somehow math is really hard when you're judging. And I don't care how smart you are, I just can't do the math. So I literally need this uh, arithmetic box. So for element groups, he had none of zero, zero, uh, 1 to 3. In element group 4, he had the 0.3 version, so that's 0.3. And rather than stack all these, I do the subtotals. So I'm at 6.3. For difficulty, he had four A's. One, two, three, four. Four tenths. So now he's at a six, seven. No bonus. Uh, and so technically his start value is a 6.7, but he only has four skills for value. So that means He's going to start at a 6.7, but the first thing we do is take off one full point for every every missing skill uh, below 6. So really, he's starting at a 4.7. So now I look at free swings. I look at his stops, 3, 5, 7, 8, 9. And then I've got these notations, uh, 12, 14, 15. So 1.5, he's at a 3.2. And I have not taken any form deductions on any of these skills yet. And same thing that Brandon did. Like, I, you know, he didn't do any of them perfectly. I think it's pretty fair to say it's two or three tenths on every one of these skills. So one, two, three, you know, maybe even the undershoot. I did already kind of deduct on the dismount. So let's just say one, two, three skills. It's high bar. Everything's messy. I'm going to say he took, he lost 0.3 on each one. So that's 0.9. So he's at a 2.3, uh, not a big score, but he did four skills. He did four non-diagrammed A's. He had free swings. He had stops. He had form breaks. Uh, it's a defensible score. And yeah, we had to make some stuff up. It's not ideal, but this is a good enough starting place. And if this is the worst you ever do, that's a great start. And you're just going to get better and better. And over time, you'll be able to, you know, in the live flow of things, watch like, oh, he did a half turn. Oh, but his legs came apart. Oh, he did the kip. Oh, but he flubbed the, the you know, the, the support. He lay on the bar, whatever it is. Oh, and his legs came apart. You know, oh, and the flyaway. Oh, his knees were apart in the air and, you know, the chest and the whatever and the step. Right. And so you'll get these details later. But as a starting point, you got to a 2.3 uh, for a pretty average JV routine, like that, that's a, that's a good job. That's a job well done. So that is it for me. Um, can you, can you explain where the 1.5 came from under the four, seven towards the bottom came from again? I think I just missed that. Yeah. yeah so that, that was, so that was, uh, my free swings and okay. my stops added together without any other form deductions. Well, and then plus the, the stuff I, I jotted down at the, on the dismount. Gotcha. So those okay. added up to, to 1.5. Okay. And then the 0.9 was from? Those, that was my guess. That was... Oh, okay. He did, he did three skills that I didn't take any deductions on. I didn't take... Yeah, I wasn't paying attention to form deductions. Uh, so I, I'm just giving him a blanket 0.3 deduction on each of those three skills. Okay. All right. Thank you. And I'll tell you, it's interesting watching the vertical judging. I've never been able to do that in my life. I've tried several times. It just, to me, I can't do it. I start off down and then I find myself going to the right. So good luck with that. Yeah, I, I tried both. Like for new judges, I think you got you to gotta try both and see what works. I found that horizontally, my notes were running on top of each other. And so vertically gave me the space to... Uh, to not pile up. But then what ends up happening with me is early on in the routine, I leave lots of space and then I run out at the bottom. And so I start having to cram them in. Mm -hmm.